Awesome. Yeah, you, you, you can go. You can oh, that go was it? now. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> hey there, I'm Nathan Simmons Uncut. I am the cream <laughs> in this Oreo. <laughs> and this is the Spooky Lightings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's spookiest endings. Yay! You didn't even say who you were. Yeah, who the who the fuck is talking? <laughs> And as you just heard, listener, that is uh, the spooky intro because this is, of course, our, I don't want to say annual because we skipped some seasons doing it, but <laughs> this is our uh, recurring spooky month. It's October. Um, this is our first uh, episode of October. And so if you are a uh, returning returning listener to the show, you know that on October, we do exclusively horror movies. Yeah. And while we are Dipping our toe, I would say, with this one. I don't know if it's necessarily true horror. It definitely has some some spooky elements in it. So. It's horrific. <laughs> I had a good time. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's a good movie. I'm... It was a light, light-hearted, light-hearted family film. Yeah. yeah. I mean, family values are at the core of the film, <laughs> technically right. speaking. Of course. I think it's anti-family values are at oh, the core. Oh, yeah. Of the uh, we, we will definitely get into that. But family values are still at the core. Sure, sure, sure. I'm tired of this family there matters <laughs> well uh i am uh dustin goes to hollywood and i'm joined by the regular ghost uh, the regular co-host here mally and nathan yeah. mally's been away i thought he said the regular ghosts and oh, i was like he's oh, running shit. with this spooky theme yeah october's getting real fucking spooky i would have been on top of my game if i did that yeah a couple of gaba ghouls over here <laughs> the jaded three the ghost of the spooky linings are here um but we're also joined by a guest Nathan, would you like to do the introductions, please? Yes, please. Welcome my good friend, Josh Browning from the VHS Files. Hello, hello. Oh, wait a minute. That's not good enough fanfare. Hold yeah, on. Yeah, we need more. We need... Yeah! There we go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hell yeah. A hero's welcome. <laughs> now, quick uh, just sidebar for our younger listeners. So a VHS, <laughs> so that is a video tape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, that they it play, play some stuff. Yeah, you gotta be kind, rewind. Yeah, I gotta say, in terms of media playback, yeah. it's uh, bam, 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 value, value, value. <laughs> you got a lot of value. That's right. That's for, right. For, in a VHS tape. And, and Josh, <laughs> jo that's not a performative title. Josh owns uh, a, a good number of VHS tapes. Well, I, uh, you know, there are people out there that own lots more than I do, but sure, I sure. do pride myself on my little collection that i have yeah here, so. so josh what's it like being a serial killer <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about sir <laughs> <laughs> no, i mean we could all agree vhs definitely the superior uh terms of distribution when it comes to media right like of course it's, yeah. of course <laughs> oh, so, yeah, so fuck laser disc huh all right oh, fine, fine that's fine laser i've disc. got a few of those too so. yeah laser disc not to be forgotten for sure they make good wall art yeah they like do. not not even as a bit like <laughs> they do <laughs> that's what i'm using mine for to be honest with you <laughs> yes sir there we go all right so uh if this is your first time tuning into the show first of all welcome second of all um you are joining us in our spooky month here the spooky linings um and we're dealing with the film possessor is our first entry in this month mm -hmm. mally this was your pick this is a film from last year want to tell us why you decided to pick this particular movie uh to be part of our spooky linings sure um well first things first I added this I added this to the list in just a random empty slot I had, mm -hmm. not realizing it fell into the spooky lining I figured. schedule. <laughs> yeah, I figured. <laughs> that was completely intentional and whew, man, that worked out. <laughs> Classic Mally. Um, but I did, you know, we all I did pick the movie I meant to pick. Okay. Which, you know, I've had some trouble there. Yeah. So you weren't going for the movie processor about an evil computer. <laughs> no. Wait, is that a thing? It's not. <laughs> or, or repossessed with Leslie Nielsen as an exorcist. Is that this? Is that the sequel to Maximum Overdrive? <laughs> yeah, it should be. Or the Mangler. <laughs> oh, now I'm upset. No, well, fuck that. Can hit pause on this recording. Let's go watch that right quick. Yeah, yeah. I'm down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. 
All right, we're done with this one. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so processor, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the story of Steve Jobs. Okay. And, <laughs> and he's had it. <laughs> and he's he. All his turtlenecks are dirty. <laughs> um, you said you were, what, what, five minutes into this movie and you were just like, this is probably going to pan out where it should be on the show, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? I think five minutes, I, the opening scene, I think I texted, I was like, I like I pulled up like the fucking Google Doc. I was like, just add this to the list now. <laughs> right, like, this, right. This this yep, no, this is gonna track. Yeah, this is bleak and it's not gonna get better. Yeah, I was like, yep, <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Yeah, and then that opening scene definitely definitely sets the stage for what's coming. Very yeah. much so. So I saw this for the first time. I was uh it was like two months ago, I was in LA mm -hmm. and just randomly put it on. Cause I was just like browsing and was like, Oh, what's that? Oh, Brandon Cronenberg. Cool. Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. Also that poster is like fucking striking. Yeah. Yes, it is. Plus I hate the color yellow. <laughs> so when I see it, I just immediately get pissed off. Mm. So I was like, Oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, it's Cronenberg. Okay, cool. <laughs> Which man, what was it like growing up in the Cronenberg house? Yeah. Was it just like, Oh, well better wake up, make some body horror. Uh, have you um, seen the color out of space? Cause I have a feeling it's similar to that. Yeah. There's some, <laughs> there's goo everywhere. <laughs> they play their, they play their VH, VHS tapes through the, uh, game hole in their chest that's right. Right. Uh, that's that makes right. sense oh shit the Cronenbergs are teletubbies <laughs> yes this is a this is a gooey movie oh yeah. it's pretty gooey oh you, you 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 see the Cronenberg name you know you're gonna get some goo uh, that's just a that's a rule not a lot of goo though I mean it's compared to his father well i mean he's doing his own thing he's yeah. going more grody than gooey yeah. yeah i think that there's a goo of the mind in this movie <laughs> this movie sure. feels gross even when it's not being gross mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true that's true have any of you guys seen his first film antiviral mm -mm. i have not and I, that's the one with caleb landry jones right yes and he's gross in, in himself but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know that movie kind of leads into this one perfectly i okay. would suggest if you haven't seen that one definitely check that one out too okay Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. He, he, it was, I, I have a hard time bringing myself to what, cause I first found out about that when we were like prepping to do this episode. Then I was like, I just, I can't, I can't watch a movie about a virus right now. I just can't do that to myself. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit of a different take than what we're experiencing at the current moment, okay. but it's no, nonetheless still pretty fucked up. All right? right. I will take it under advisement. Was anyone else a little thrown off by the fact that this is a Canadian movie? I mean, it's Cronenberg. Well, I, I mean, kinda... it's David Cronenberg. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just like, it's really going against like, like not the stereotype or anything, but this movie really goes against the whole Canadian brand. Yeah, yeah. they're not very nice. Like, there's not a single single mounty in this movie oh sure i didn't hear a single a there's a lot of mounting though oh there's some mounting <laughs> well depending on what cut you watched that's right. true so you you watched both versions josh i did yeah okay thank you i got i've had such a problem with this because this movie is very difficult to nail down what the actual title is because right. i've seen a ton of different places referred to it simply as possessor Another bunch of outlets refer to it as Possessor Uncut, but they don't yeah. distinguish. For a while, IMDb listed it as Possessor Uncut yes. as yeah. the title of the film. Yeah. So Uncut is a, technically like an unrated, uncut edition of it. Like, that's not the name sure. of the movie. There's like a minute difference. It's the uncircumcised edition. <laughs> exactly. Because I remember when DC... When I first put this, put this on the list, DC was texting me. He's like, dude, which, like, which version? Blah, blah, blah. I was like watch the one that has a dick in it like yeah. that's the one you need to watch you've pretty much nailed uh exactly what the differences are yeah. that and some some changes in the gory scenes but yeah. okay yeah but it's mainly the dick yeah pretty much if there's no hard dicks in it you're watching the neutered version mm. <laughs> possessor neutered appropriately i don't like that as much <laughs> okay well uh Nathan, this is was uh, your and I's first watch of this. I yeah. think, Josh, have you seen this before? Guys, I, this is like my sixth or seventh watch of this. Oh, boy. It, within the last month or so, to yeah. be completely honest. Are you okay? <laughs> so going back to my original question, Josh, what is it like being a serial killer? Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that seems time consuming. So the fact that you had time to watch this movie. Sure. Well, I, I don't sleep much. You know, uh, Mally, you're really starting to make a case here. I might actually be a serial killer now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a lot of time on my hands here <laughs> recently, so. <laughs> yeah, well, you did a you did a video on on Brandon Cronenberg for your YouTube channel, though. Yes, well, I mean to to, to kind of 
start from the beginning where um, perhaps we'd better start from the beginning. Oh yeah. Um, I, I'm a giant David Cronenberg fan. Yeah. And, and you know, I, when I found out that his son was making movies, I'm a fucking giant, <laughs> <laughs> right. When I found out his son was making movies, I was like, well, this is either going to be good or bad. Mm-hmm. And I saw antiviral and I was like, okay, he's definitely following in his father's footsteps. Sure. I'm digging where this is going. And then possessor came out last year and, <laughs> It was fitting for the kind of year we had last year um, <laughs> yeah. and um, didn't see many movies, saw this one really late in the year and be- pretty much became obsessed with it because I think this movie is fucking great. Yeah. So you're saying that when it comes to Possessor, you are an obsessor. Nice. Pretty much. Oh, God I mean, no, you can't do that for yourself. <laughs> That's not how giving you a soundboard was the worst idea. That's not fair. <laughs> Here, I can I can kind of play into that. No, <laughs> no dueling soundboards. No, this is the this is my nightmare. <laughs> this is. I feel like I feel like we're on like the podcast equivalent of like a morning zoo crew show. Like, <laughs> Fuck. You're tuning into JR and the dog team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, please continue. I hate it. I'm glad we're starting this off with some laughs because this movie is a fucking rough sit. <laughs> this movie is fucking hilarious, Nathan. Oh, it rules. It rules. Don't get me wrong. Like, this is just the... This is... This movie, it's just a wholesome family movie about... A scientific mind control assassin taking over the body of an Amazon employee. Right. It's adorable. <laughs> it's basically we bought a zoo. <laughs> oh, shit. What, what's the name of the, the company has zoo in the name? What was it? Zoo through. That was it. Zoo yeah, through. we bought a zoo through. <laughs> I never saw that. Did they actually buy a zoo? Yes, sir. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I think they did. Otherwise, it's false advertising and you can't call your movie that. <laughs> right, right. Uh, sorry, Josh. Yeah, continue. <laughs> But no, I mean, I like you mentioned, uh, Nathan, I, I actually just did a YouTube video um, with my director spotlight kind of series that I'm starting here. And this was the first one I did was, mm-hmm. on, was on Brandon Cronenberg, just kind of how he's following in his father's footsteps. And I feel like that's a good thing yeah. for film because, you know, David Cronenberg's getting old and he's not doing as many movies anymore. He's right. kind of gotten away from what he used to do in the, in the past. Oh, and, yeah. If, if Brandon Cronenberg wants to pick up that stick and run with it, I'm all for it. Because with these two movies, I can see that he's got a lot of good stuff in him. And I'm anxious, I'm anxious to see where he goes from here. Yeah. yeah plus, um, you know, David Cronenberg's not long for this world when Jason throws that javelin or whatever the fuck. In Jason <laughs> That's right. So. Yeah, at the Crystal Lake facility. That's right. <laughs> it's been prophesized. I have to say, guys, y'all, the, the Freddy versus Jason episode, I was laughing my ass off <laughs> that entire episode. Thanks. That's two guests now back to back that have complimented that specific episode <laughs> well I, I am a giant friday the 13th fan also right. so mm-hmm. and, and again i'm not really uh, i'm not doing too good for saying that i'm not a serial killer by admitting all of these <laughs> things but. i wasn't gonna say it but <laughs> <laughs> all right well um nathan yeah first first reaction to this movie well so one thing i have to give you context with is that I watched this film with my parents. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. So, oh, no. So that was that was and the uncut version as well. The uncut version. <laughs> yeah. So well, you got uh, to. You got to. That was a that was a, a, a whole layer to the uncomfortability of this experience. But um yeah, I so I saw the trailer for this a while back. I wish I hadn't because uh, I mean, a lot of the nuances aren't in the trailer, but the trailer does cover almost every single major story beat in the film. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I still found myself completely like absorbed by this this journey. And I think what's interesting is like the, you know, J- Josh touched on the body horror stuff, but the so the, it, this has a a couple of different layers of body horror there's the there's the violence of it all there's the invasion of it all but there's also the horror of not trusting your own body Mm -hmm. which i think is is really like there i don't this this movie is one that i cannot wait to i almost wish i had time to watch this as many times as josh had before this recording because i think i'm gonna take something different away from it each time quick question though nathan yeah what do your parents think of that dick (laughs) It's a pretty sweet dick. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, so so I will say when he puts on the VR goggles and it cuts to that couple, my dad just goes, "Oh." <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, you know what? You know what, Nathan's dad? It's a feature. It's a feature to see a dick in a movie. It's a feature. So you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they didn't seem to hate it, so I guess, you know, uh, A plus dick? I, I don't know. Yeah. They're just great. Uh, apparently, like, that was something that was in the original script and then got was cut out and then when brandon cronenberg met with andrea rice bro she was like i think i should have a penis in this scene and he's like i you yes you're the person i should cast in this movie you get me <laughs> well I, again not uh, not stating well for my case for not being a serial killer but the scene ah, is better the scene is better with the dick in it i have to say <laughs> yeah sure yeah i mean you're not wrong oh by the way that's where the title comes from the dick was cut out of the movie and it got put back in that's, so right. Right. that's right that's uh, right there you go <laughs> release the dick cut <laughs> release the dick cut they nice. did so i watched this movie last night as part of a double feature oh boy and i watched it with with past guest, jingle all the way <laughs> <laughs> with past guest michael moss we watched malignant first oh right hell yeah well actually we watched malignant then we went and got chinese food and then we came back and watched mm -hmm. <laughs> possessor and i i'm gonna go ahead and uh, let you guys know up front this is the least amount of notes i've ever taken for any movie wow i found myself taking very few notes as the movie went on as well yeah same but that's not anything different for me i just couldn't <laughs> it was another t case where i just couldn't stop watching yeah i mean this movie it, it sets the atmosphere so perfectly that you're engulfed in the world you're in and mm -hmm. what's going on that you really just want to kind of follow along and not get distracted from it i yeah. found this i found the same thing like usually when i'm watching for our show um i'm taking all kinds of notes about things i want to talk about and this it's very very minimal like mm -hmm. there's a lot there's a lot here but there's not a lot that i can take notes about <laughs> yeah like my first note i didn't take my first note until she's already taking control of him oh wow and yeah. my first note is just oh hey he works at amazon <laughs> <laughs> i had three notes up until that point and that was it and two of them were before the movie even started mm. so <laughs> nice okay <laughs> um Huh? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Don't worry. I'll, we'll, I'll guide you along. Don't worry. But before we do, yeah. Um, for those who may not be familiar with the movie Possessor, let's talk about it. That's what we've been doing, Dustin. <laughs> what? Oh, Dustin just reasserted his personality. <laughs> <laughs> so the year mm -hmm. is 2020. Um, the director, as we've mentioned, is Brandon Cronenberg. Uh, the movie stars uh, are two Pete, at least, Andrea Riseborough, mm -hmm. uh, previously from the Mandy episode uh christopher abbott previously from the it comes at night episode right yeah and jennifer jason lee previously from the hateful eight episode <laughs> uh sean bean i don't think we've done a sean bean movie have we um no actually that's can't think shocking anything. we haven't yeah. that's surprising yeah that is surprising uh dude christopher abbott super underrated agreed he's so good i agree yeah agreed. yeah you know the my first experience with him was the show girls on same HBO. Sure. same mm -hmm. and and I fucking hate that. I watched every season of it, but I hate that fucking show. <laughs> See, I love the show, but I hate Lena Dunham. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Like, take her character out of the show, and it's pretty good. All the characters in that show are just completely narcissistic, and and just, I hate all of them. Oh, they're and, all awful people. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and Christopher Abbott's character was one of them, and he's got a couple of story beats throughout that storyline, but that was what I knew him from. But he has mm -hmm. been doing a lot of ind independent horror stuff lately, mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's impressing the shit out me yeah well and he's in dustin you'll like this um i can't pronounce his name but the director of dog pound the favorite oh yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah killing of a sacred deer he's got a new movie coming out and chris rabbit's in it nice oh wait he does he didn't direct dog pound he did he, he did do killing of a sacred deer and the favorite he didn't do are you thinking about dog tooth what did i say you said dog pound oh yeah dog tooth what the fuck ever killing of a sacred deer is a fucking bizarre movie man it's a great movie <laughs> I know Christopher Abbott to me looks like Kit Harrington mixed with one of the Safety brothers. <laughs> oh, shit. I can see that. He definitely looks like that one Safety brother for sure. <laughs> but the movie also stars uh, Tuppence Middleton. I'm going to butcher his name. Rossif Sutherland, I think. Sure. Mm -hmm. Gabriel Graham and Oof. I'm, I'm going to butcher another name. Kaneito Horn. Yeah. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. That's probably not right, but yeah. Probably not. From, uh, from Hemlock Grove. It's okay. Nobody's listening anyway. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> the movie had a budget of question mark because I couldn't find it, but it did manage to gross just under a million dollars worldwide. Uh, not very. I mean, it came out during the pandemic. What can you do? Right. Yeah. This was one of those movies that like didn't didn't they like they just didn't do a 
uh, overseas release because of the pandemic. I, I think that's something I read was it was mm, it was okay. only released in like the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I mean it was released right to streaming. Yeah, I, I don't I don't believe it had a, well if they released it in theaters it was a very short run right. limited theater. But, yeah, yeah, I mean it was basically straight to straight to digital. Yeah, it it premiered at some festival in like January 2020, and then pandemic and just straight to Ugh, streaming sucks yeah oh man because these are the movies i want to see in the theater and unfortunately nathan can vouch for this like uh-huh. we, we don't get movies like this in panama city right. anyway mm-hmm. and then you factor in the pandemic and it was just like no there's no chance this is ever coming so i was kind of grateful <laughs> right. i was grateful it went to digital so that way it gave me the opportunity to watch it right. sure. this would be a great movie to watch on a plane <laughs> <laughs> sure hey the movie currently sits at a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I think it's deserved. Yeah. Sure. Well, fellas, uh, let's get into the trailer. Yeah. I have not seen this trailer, so this Me neither. I, can... I, I didn't watch it before viewing. Specifically avoided it. I think you'll be shocked at, at how much of the movie it shows. Yeah. All right. It's just two minutes of just a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's a great trailer. <laughs> Possessor uncut. <laughs> All right. Here we go. You have a very special nature. One we've worked hard together to unlock. God, that opening scene is so good. Yeah. Insane. Oof. Pull me out. The sound design in this movie is fucking insane. Phenomenal. It's great. The doubling of the voices is such a cool touch. Yes. Really well done. No. No, I'm fine. Oh, How was your trip? Dull. Extraordinarily dull. That knife was dull. <laughs> yeah, like a, a steak contract. knife. A yeah. <laughs> the target is the CEO of the largest operation in the U.S. You'll be binding to Colin Tate. We can't afford any mistakes on this one. Ready? When this scene happened, I wrote down, I was like, oh, so he's in the Matrix. <laughs> What's with you today? What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, this trailer is really giving away a lot of the yep. the beats. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, they just put it all in here. Son of a bitch. Oh, just wait. What are you doing? I can't pull the trigger. I need to know. I need to know what she's done to me. It's become a danger. Where is she? Come out or I'll do it! Yeah, the last five minutes of the movie. Yeah. yeah. Good lord. Sometimes that small thought is all it takes to lose control. They should have left the movie uncut and cut the shit out of that trailer because God <laughs> yeah. damn. No kidding. Yeah, I really wish I hadn't seen that trailer. I yeah. Ugh. Still thoroughly engrossing because of the performances and the direction and sound design. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. um before we before we dive into the plot, uh my quick question. Mm-hmm. So this movie uh, apparently it takes place in 2008 an alternate 2008 according to i think wikipedia says right is there a chiron that i missed nope. or something on a news channel or is that just part of the the publicity matter that's just not actually in the film no it's 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 definitely a stylistic choice by Cronenberg. Okay. Um, uh, I kind of went into a little bit of this in my YouTube video where I broke down his stuff, but mm-hmm. like this and his other movie, Antiviral, are set in alternate timelines. Right. Mm. And that's something that they don't make clear, but you can pick up on it, at, you know, again, after how many watches there's bits of it like her little sidekick phone that she's typing on was one that like jumped out at me yeah well, and my my biggest issue with this being in 2008 no one was vaping Damn in it. 2008 I was, I was hoping to say before you anyone pointed out this movie is brought to you by big vape that that, <laughs> that is something i read that cronenberg was just like i i thought it'd be funny if like 
that's kind of what replaced everyone else's vices in this world. That's yeah. the only difference in the timelines is people got vaping technology <laughs> earlier. Fat clouds. Yeah, but yeah I, I watched the, uh, the I mean, I've, I watched the special features and everything for mm -hmm. Possessor, and he, he talks about it in depth in there, how he, he thought it would be cool to set everything in an alternate 2008, where it is, you know, technology, you know, if you, if you notice in this, and even in antiviral, the technology still looks old and decrepit, and it's got, you know, even some of the close-ups of some of the technology in this has dust all over it and looks mm -hmm. bad, but everything else is polished and looks fancy. Yeah. Um, but the vehicles are all older vehicles, too, if you've noticed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She steps into a car that's like something out of Dick Tracy at the beginning <laughs> of the movie. And then her the the visor on her head looks like something you'd get at the eye doctor in the 90s. <laughs> I was going to say it's it's got that old school plastic color that used to be on everything in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, yeah. That really gross. Cronenberg stated that, you know, if 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 he was when he was doing this, it was going to be one of those things where if we would have made one different decision along our path, it would yeah. have created a different timeline. And this is what 2008 would have looked like. Interesting. And that's another reason I got super engulfed in these movies and his storytelling and and whatnot and, and that's sure. why i've kind of focused on him here in the past couple of months is i'm just kind of enamored by with by the creativity he's going at these movies with yeah in that regard for sure but before we get too deep into the movie guys uh i have a shocking announcement <gasps> no drink the drink of the movie i'm retiring as a regular segment of the show oh, oh, wow. i'm sorry sad to say it may come back in future episodes here and there, but okay. definitely not a recurring thing. Mostly just because it's exhausting. You didn't want to make like a sangria rice burrow? I thought about doing some kind of red wine, but and a sangria crossed my mind. But <laughs> your liver is just screaming, "Please fucking stop!" Just a just a shot of Sean Jim Beam. <laughs> Nathan, I think, I think after the tea shot I took for the Resident Evil episode, that my body just is shutting down. Yeah, the Everclear's been kicking Dustin's ass. <laughs> <laughs> but so to go back to a, a, fir, a, a previous point that I mentioned, mm -hmm. my first two notes of the movie had nothing to do with the movie itself. Yeah. But before the movie actually started, my first note was, is Neon Pictures the new A24? I think yeah. so. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I mean, it, they, they've been crushing it. Yeah. Every every release I've seen from them has been good. And and all, and all also full of Neon. Full of Neon. Uh, strangely enough. Huh. They're not... They're not false advertising with that name. Right. So, <laughs> my second note, these opening production cards, I wrote down, is this a joke? Because there are, s I, I lost count. I, I was like, there's no way another one is about to pop up. And then sure enough, it's more, pro it, there's more production cards than like a Tommy Wiseau film at the <laughs> beginning. Of this. I mean, dude, that's, that's a low budget movie for you. That's I'm work <laughs> I'm working on a small movie right now and there's like, five or six production companies. <laughs> I think there were seven or eight for this one. I've noticed with most indie movies nowadays, like you, you're, you're seeing tons of production company cards <sighs> at the beginning. I just saw Candyman and there were like six. Yes. Like, yeah. There were so yes. many. There were so many. But yeah, I mean, I, I think Neon and A24 are going to, are pretty much becoming our new like Carol Co. and, uh, <laughs> sure. you know, Canon Films. Yeah. I was just about to say Canon. <laughs> Dimension Films. Yeah, better budgets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to take a back seat to this episode just because, like I said, I don't have as many notes. Mm -hmm. So uh, you guys feel free to guide yourselves through and as, as sure. my notes come along. Because my next note isn't until, yeah, Chris Abbott's takeover. I guess it's probably helpful if we describe what this movie is about. Sure. So, Mally, what about you? Since this is your pick, do you have like a general... I already said it's a fucking like sci-fi mind control assassin takes over the body of an Amazon employee. Like yeah. that, it did literally what the movie is. Uh, he's not wrong. And then he starts to take his brain back. So they can kill his father-in-law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he fights back. That, I mean, it. it's a pretty simple plot. It's just weird as shit. Shit. Holy shit, I just realized this movie is Assassin's Creed. <laughs> oh my god. That's all it is. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? It is. Yeah. Prove me wrong. Uh okay. Uh this movie uh was not written. <laughs> Pause. So is this the best video game adaptation? Ooh, yes. That is true. We were just talking about the Assassin's Creed movie too, like a couple episodes ago. Were we? <laughs> yeah, because we both said we skipped it. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's right. That's all that came up. <laughs> so I, the first note I have is like the movie opens with her, you know, recalibrating, plugging the, like the first shot basically is the skin breaking while that, mm -hmm. you know, electrode yeah. goes into her skull. And I was like, this is we already know mm -hmm. what kind of movie this will be sort of yeah. like it's upsetting. 
And then I just thought it was an interesting choice that when she comes uh, when she comes out and joins the rest of the, the girls, she's unbraided her hair. Yep. Yeah. I, I just it it's already like showing that this person is not the, their own. Their, their body is not their own anymore. It, it, it took me a sec to even realize that it was with the same people, honestly, because of the, the drastic change in hair. Oh, yeah. It would have been it would have been something a little more clear had they done that with Christopher Abbott's character as mm-hmm. well. Like he something about him changed when she was in there. Right. Yeah. Um, um, but, you know, they don't really do anything like that. Um, I, I I love and that's another thing that I'm really digging here about Brandon Cronenberg is mm-hmm. there's technology here, but he goes into no real description of how any of it works. It's yes. very on the surface. It's like this is what this does, but yeah. I'm not going to tell you the science behind it. I'm fine with that. That's that's all you need, though. Yeah. Well, that's why I, I, I love shit like that. Yeah. That's what I love about Inception is it's just like, yeah, these t- these uh, vials that I have in this suitcase <laughs> will let us go into dreams. Yeah. I mean, I, that's I just spoke about this on our podcast not too long ago about Christopher Nolan and like mm-hmm. his <laughs> His use of like exposition Ugh. is necessary in his movies, but sometimes it cramps up the the storytelling. In my opinion, I agree. Damn it! <clears throat> well, I mean, like me. in Inception, for instance, Joseph Gordon Levitt's character literally only exists to explain things to the audience. Yeah, right. Yeah, agree. And to be handsome. Well, <laughs> yes. Even the Dark Knight, and this is, I mean, I love the Dark Knight. I think it's amazing, and I was skeptical when I first saw it, but when I went into the theater and saw that opening scene with the Joker, it blew my mind. I think it blew everybody's mind. Yeah. And watching it now, that whole opening sequence is just exposition for the Joker. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, right. And it kind of, it kind of downgraded it a little bit for me when I've watched it recently, Mm because I'm like, God, like... Yeah, I mean, I needed to know this going in, but watching it every time now and getting that information dump is just a little grating. Right. But but that's what I tend to like about movies like this yeah. is it's like, okay, this is this, this is how it works, and that's all we're telling you, and that's all I need sometimes. Yeah, the, this movie doesn't hold your hand at all. Right. If you don't get that opening scene from The Dark Knight, you don't get one of the best lines in movie history for me, which is, you and your friends are dead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking laugh every time at that line. Well, and you know, it, since you guys have already covered it on the show before I before I joined, I, I have to take this opportunity to point out that The Joker is the ultimate scam. <laughs> <laughs> like, God tier scam. Yeah. Is there a scam in this movie? Yeah. Um, yeah. And much like The Joker, she stabs the shit out of this. I mean, she's kind of a scamp in this opening <laughs> scene because she was supposed to use that gun and she stabs the fuck out of him with a very dull knife. And uh, there's this great Q&A that uh, the Hollywood Reporter had with with uh, Brandon Cronenberg where he made it like they were just like, you know, what do you say to audiences who think your movie's too violent? And he goes like one less stab and the movie doesn't work. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's, just, it's like you need that. You need that brutality to show you how far she's, you know, leaving her humanity behind. Yeah. Well, we've touched on the sound design. Like, that's what one thing I really love about this scene is oh. you hear every single every single stab Slice. to the gut yeah. you hear. And it's just it's gross. Yeah. And it, it, like it makes you feel dirty but i love it it's just someone in a booth stomping some cabbage i think i think i am a serial killer <laughs> <laughs> well i also have to say speaking of the sound design about the stabbings they don't do the conventional thing of it sounding like somebody literally just putting like a butcher's knife through a melon right, like, right. but it normally sounds like when people get stabbed it is a very more visceral real sounding kind of stab you know yeah the only way i can describe the sound is gushy yes it's a gushy movie yeah yeah yeah, it, yeah. bring a bucket and a mop <laughs> like if you're stabbing a, instead of slicing a watermelon open you were just going straight at the watermelon like, yeah sorry i'm still laughing at nathan's joke right it's pretty gross <laughs> like you ever like stuck a fork into like warm mac and cheese yeah right that's a good analysis yeah i'm hungry mac and cheese and watermelon sounds delicious <laughs> welcome to atlanta josh exactly it's <laughs> ludicrous's next album it's just like it's a pairing with chicken and beer <laughs> i gotta say uh, another thing that i'm always a sucker for is a completely silent smash to a title card yeah mm-hmm. uh, yeah that's that's a good one or the exact opposite of that with 
with funny games. Oh, sure. <laughs> Bright yellow, though. I don't know how uh, you guys... I liked it. <laughs> oh, I fucking hated it. Since you don't like the color yellow. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I and this was something we talked about earlier this season, uh, and, and Mally kind of touched on it when we were talking about Mandy, but like Andre Riceboro, there's a lot of great eye acting in this mm-hmm. movie. Just like, and not just because Sean Bean gets like a fire poker into his, but like, <laughs> I, I just think that everyone is like playing all of the different levels and changing changes in personality just through these micro expressions Mm -hmm. oh for sure well that's something i really love about this is you know her story goes on throughout the movie but tasa well i mean the andrea riseborough's character tasa voss like Mm -hmm. she's done this so much and is so good at it that she literally has to rehearse being a normal human person yeah yes okay I wanted to bring that scene up because did anyone else think that by the time the movie was nearing the end, that the reveal was going to be that Christopher Abbott was her in that moment, like that he had taken over her and that's why she was rehearsing because that was him rehearsing? Oh, interesting. No, I, I felt like it. I I felt like it was her trying to remind herself how to be a person like she's trying that's what it is for sure yeah yeah no i i didn't i didn't think there was anything else to it at the time oh i I mean by the time we get to the end and you know you have the scene of her rehearsing Mm -hmm. his speech patterns i thought that was what the reveal was going to be is like oh that was him oh okay i see what you're saying that makes sense yeah that was a big note i took is how much some of the stuff that happens within this like that whole sequence of her rehearsing having to be normal with her family and then it kind of gets mirrored with his character as well Mm -hmm. like some of the same beats happen like if you notice when they're when she's got her friends over and she's like oh i didn't think they were going to stay this long like her husband said the same thing in the beginning so i'm instantly trying to figure out as i'm watching i'm one of these people that's always trying to figure out how this movie's going to end yeah you come to the right place (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and and fortunately, this one did not go the path that I had foreseen. Like, I love when a movie can subvert my expectations like that. Yeah, except for The Last Jedi, right? Right. God (laughs) damn it. So this is after she's taken over Christopher Abbott. And, like, she goes and walks around, comes home, and, like, his like girlfriend has friends over and they're you know having a quiet quiet night in like celebrating a friend's promotion Mm -hmm. but they're so they're having like a quiet night in but they're also doing lines of coke yeah and that's those seem like conflicting ideas like it's fun like coke isn't a relaxing drug like weed or even like shrooms like you can sit back you can vibe out a little bit but coke yeah (laughs) that seems conflicting to me everybody's doing weird stuff in this movie when she goes home their dinner is white rice and spaghetti well i mean that's first the fuck off that's a good meal (laughs) and he's their kids playing with a a cursed robot (laughs) the cursed robot what what you what you didn't understand nathan it was bulking season oh okay so she's getting gains bro yeah well i will say that fucking doll is the creepiest thing in this movie yeah that doll is awesome <laughs> it's five minutes before we get that great effect of her like melting away and the doll is still scarier yeah. well, well, the doll gets its own hero shot and it does nothing in this it, it serves no purpose uh, i disagree it fucking tried to jump into my soul <laughs> uh yeah no i i don't know like it, it is weird everyone's doing coke very casually um, there were occasional moments where like the dialogue was so strange to me. Like there's um, I love I love Gerder's little briefing where she's like she says, consider the face of Colin Tate, which is a very Rod Serling thing to say, mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. which this whole movie is like, what if what if the Twilight Zone was just just awful like just, <laughs> just terrifying um it's very important for her to know that colin has ibs yep. yeah <laughs> like, which is a, which is a great little detail um uh right after that transformation one of the weirdest most fucked up choices in this movie to me they're floaters in the lens flare outside the apartment. Did you guys notice that? Uh-uh. What? There's a there's like a lens flare when it's when it's panning over the uh, over Colin's apartment outside. Mm-hmm. And there's just like little eye floaters in them. Like huh. it's the, I've never seen anything like that before. It's such a strange detail. Oh, no, I didn't notice that. And then she, you know, let me see that dick. She tries to <laughs> she's got to she's got to look at it like I mean, immediately. If like if you get put into someone else's body, like the 
first thing you gotta do is like you, you gotta take a look yeah like all right what am i working with all right cool tight all you right. think so i mean this movie did it scooby-doo did it yeah like <laughs> wait scooby-doo did it? it make it makes that uh it makes that bedroom scene play a little differently when you look at it that way too yeah. so yeah. it sure does yeah my next note though after the production cards note wasn't until this moment i was like oh old buddy's got some cum gutters all right jesus christ <laughs> Chris Trevor looks good in this movie i have never disliked the <laughs> phrase more than that one i thought that'd be right up your alley bally Ooh, alley mally Ooh, that rhymed yeah that's a good one that felt good uh you you keep your cum gutters out of my alley <laughs> keep your alley out of my cum gutters god damn it nathan this is a gross episode but it ties in neatly with the movie i think the movie's gross too it's a grody episode well nathan you, you you mentioned that this movie doesn't hold your hand through things yeah and there's as many times as i've watched it so far there's still something about this movie that i can't quite place and oh, that's sure. Um, when she's, when she's taken over the body and she's in the Amazon yeah. place working and, and doing the, the virtual working and all that, um, there's a couple of shots where she sees this, this floating piece of styrofoam or something in the air. Yeah. I, I've been trying to figure that out too. They do nothing to explain that. I mean, I, I would imagine it's like when Jennifer Jason Lee's character is telling her if there's any anomalies or anything right. in her stuff, that that's what they need to start pointing out. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the only thing I can equate it to, but why would that be happening in the real world to her? That might be my, I'm going to make a guess. Yeah, that might just be Andrea Riceborough in uh, Chris Rabbit's body losing grip with reality because the process of merging her her mind with his body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I figured it was. It's like those are like the equivalent of like the spiders in Enemy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. A movie I still haven't seen. <laughs> oh, oh Nathan, oh buddy, I, I need to. I want to come back for that episode. <laughs> well, we've we've already done it, but we got to redo oh. it. We've been talking about redoing it forever. Yeah, we have. We literally have been talking about doing a part two since we recorded the first one. <laughs> she, I, I think you're right. There's a, there's a sense of her not feeling at home anywhere. Like yeah. she. You know, Gerder wants her to turn everything off to be this like unfeeling machine so mm -hmm. that she can, you know, step up and take the take the job. A Terminator. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and and I think that she there uh, there's a theme that runs throughout this movie that is trying to the, the thing, the things that we put ourselves through to prove ourselves to our elders, mm -hmm. you know, like we've got we've got Christopher Abbott's character. Uh, he's. He's constantly just eating shit, trying to prove himself to Sean Bean. She is lying to herself about her attachments in order to impress Gerder because it means the world to her that she could maybe have this job one day. Mm -hmm. And she's falling apart because she can't fucking sustain it. I think that that's just meant to be, yeah, like a weird little visual glitch. But I wish it had come back maybe one more time. Well, they also do the do the deed of of making us see that she's having these issues with her wrist. Yeah. Yes. And. and and how those two things tie together, they don't go into explaining. And uh, that, you well, know, she looks at her own body like she doesn't understand what it is yeah. or she yeah. doesn't feel like she's in it. Like she's trying to remind herself that it's her blood that's here, you know? Well, that's going back to the idea that it could have been Christopher Abbott taking over her body and her not knowing it. And that's him because in that moment he's rehearsing or she's rehearsing what he sounds like by watching through the camera and stuff. I don't know. I thought they were trying to do something with that, but I guess sure. not. It is. It is interesting. It does play a couple of different levels to to kind of throw you off too. Yeah. And it wouldn't be out of the realm of the story here because we do find out that one of the guys he works with, Zuthru, yeah. is a secret agent for the company to make sure you know he scouted this guy out. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Ah, fucking Eddie. Eddie has Eddie has the most baffling lines of dialogue in this movie. Yeah. Uh, I wrote them both down and they're in the same scene. <laughs> I've always considered it your moral obligation to cut queen the boss's daughter mm -hmm. and I'll never get the sin stain out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. That's a very that's Frank from Blue Velvet. Like that's not <laughs> that does not belong in this movie. I mean, we can all we can all relate to it, you know. <laughs> My next note after all the stuff with Christopher Abbott was just like, oh shit, Sean Bean out of nowhere because oh, yeah. I did not know he was in this movie. Oh yeah. And boy, what a brilliant choice. It's refreshing. Because it's it also it sets us up to think you see him on screen and you're like, well, of course the assassination's going to go off without a hitch. Yeah. <laughs> but 
But it does not. It does, in fact, does not. It does, in fact, have a hitch. How the fuck did he survive that? That <laughs> attack. Well, Cron- David, or David, I, I'm going to get this confused all the time now, but Brandon Cronenberg has done that in, uh, in both of his movies. Antiviral has a, a small role with Malcolm McDowell. Oh, so sure. he, he, he tends to have these bigger name actors play these bit parts in his movies at this point. Um, and yeah, I mean... Sean Bean here is it did a great job of making us not like him from the moment he's on screen. Sure. But I kind of like him because it's Sean Bean. <laughs> <laughs> I was conflicted when he gets murdered. He's very proud of he's very proud of the joke Dubai and goodbye. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Nathan, it's I mean, that's that's a Nathan level joke right I, there, it buddy. Is, I hate it to, is. to say it. But. That is a Nathan joke. Dude, I this also, is Oh, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Go, no, 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 you no, go. no, no, no. I was just going to say, this is the... <laughs> yeah. Fuck you! <laughs> this is the second movie this season where someone gets Uncle Phil out of the front door. Yeah, that's <laughs> sure. fucking great. <laughs> I love that it's a reoccurring thing this season. <laughs> I, I, I'm with you, though, Dustin. Like, like this guy, Parse is Bad News Bears from the mm-hmm. moment go, but he also, like, I laughed out loud when he negs Colin like shits on his daughter in front of his friends uh-huh. and then just kind of nods away that they can leave. Like, yeah. He's like, gives kinda, like, I'm, nod, like right, get out I'm here. done with you. He's like, you can go now. <laughs> well, I love his comment when he, when, when Colin actually approaches him and starts the fight with him, mm-hmm. he's like, why don't you go fuck off in the corner? Just don't get any, get any on my floor. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't dirt. Don't dirty up my floor. Right. <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah. He's able to keep his cool the entire time, which I th- thought was great. Because like even when he's drunk mm-hmm. at the end, when Colin comes back in, I, we talked about this. I can't remember what movie it was, but it was recent where Colin puts the gun on the table and he's like, Ugh, "Just get out of here before I call the cops." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think this dude cares that you're gonna call the cops. Right. Yeah. Just the balls. That's that's why I liked his character. I was like, "All right, this dude's an asshole, but he he sticks to his word. He's a piece of shit all through and through." <laughs> yeah, and it plays into the realism of it because I mean, like in in a movie, of course we're gonna get someone that's gonna freak out about the sight of a gun or whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, th- this guy lives in his own world and he's yeah. just like, "Fuck off," yeah. you know, <laughs> like. But but that scene that scene is amazing and and that scene is the reason I texted Nathan and I was like dude if you're gonna watch this movie watch the uncut because holy shit like the the cut version cuts this scene to pieces mm. really yeah I yelled like I had a visceral reaction when she wrenched his teeth out yep. yeah. It, it it makes me cr- like I've seen the movie six times at this point and it still makes me cringe like that scene the 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 makeup effects in this yes. movie are fucking phenomenal yeah. agreed yeah I, I I just don't know how the fuck he survives that <laughs> I, I don't know uh, yeah me neither yeah you get that throwaway line on the the news station later like yeah he somehow is in stable condition I'm like fucking what <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I was. Uh, what was the, with the that I, this, jumping ahead a little bit, but the flash forward, you know, when we see uh, Voss looking at him like while he's recovering. I don't know if it's a flash forward as much as it is her just imagining the scenario. The sen- imagining yeah, like, another confrontation. Yeah, mm-hmm. like just imagining the scenario that she's now in. Yeah, interesting. You yeah, know, she's she's gonna have to deal with this major fuck up that just happened. Right. Can I make a suggestion? I know it may be heresy to say, but mm-hmm. oh god, one of my problems with this movie was I thought it was a little too long. Interesting. Like when it when it started with the Christopher Abbott stuff, like with her taking over, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this would have been a good spot to start and then just shift some scenes around, trim some stuff and like mm. sh- kind of like you start the movie like guessing like what's going on here and then you reveal, oh, this is someone else in his body. Uh, I don't know. I just, I wasn't really engaged with this movie until... That would be interesting. I, I, I will say... I, I felt this movie fly by. Like, yeah, yeah, same. Yeah. Maybe it was just me. I genuinely, I I had to, I, I got a phone call like right in, uh, like at the moment where uh, he sets the gun on the table. Mm-hmm. And then I, I like, I took the phone call real, and then realized as I was pressing play again, I was like, fuck, I have 30 minutes left. Mm. Yeah. Like I'm already almost done with this movie. It's, it was, it would kind of, I don't know. It, it worked for me. Okay. Maybe it's just me. I'm honestly happy to be able to watch a movie, any movie that's under two hours long. And now like, <laughs> you have no. come to the right place. <laughs> Welcome sir. to the podcast, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I, I would watch more movies in my life. If more movies were less than two fucking hours long. Well, I mean, you have serial killing to get. 
get done. So <laughs> that's you ain't right. got that kind that's of right. time. You got your nights. Right. You need your nights. I, I, when I looked this on Hulu, there is a section in the movies uh, uh, page that is yep. just yep. ninety minute movies. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yep. like, that's great. I saw that. I love that. Like everyone's just like, who has the time? That's the only section Dustin browses. <laughs> well, you missed it because you weren't here last week, Mally. But I'm a hypocrite because Prisoners is the longest episode we've done, like the longest movie we've done this season. Yeah, and even even that movie flies by for me. Like that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. I think the pacing. Is perfect yeah that's what i was gonna say it's i don't mind two hour plus movies if i don't feel that it's dragging its feet if it serves right. a purpose to be that long and i feel like a lot of two hour movies don't <laughs> sure i just watched i just watched endgame the, uh last night actually and and a three hour movie that movie feels like it's an hour and a half long for yeah me. agreed because like, agreed. Agreed. they do stuff with that time it, it it keeps it moving and like as long as you're doing that in a three hour movie right. i'm good yeah but if it's if it's dragging along fucking i'm i got other shit to do man right like it took me five sittings to finish fallen kingdom earlier Ugh. this season oh god yeah don't get me started on jurassic park I, I could watch the extended versions of the lords of the rings and not feel the four to five hour mm -hmm. time because they're doing shit they're they're moving along nothing's wasted yeah uh there's no navel gazing but i do feel like a lot of this movie is kind of that but that's playing into the whole tone and atmosphere of the movie there is a lot yeah, of the, the feelings of alienation and exactly. confusion and i that sequence like when he's recalibrating in the bathroom and he's going through the different micro expressions and you know happy and sad and mm -hmm, sobbing mm -hmm. i just that's it's a showcase mm -hmm. i mean that is like you know, that's one of those things where it's like, that's the clip you show at the awards ceremony. Right, right. It's so good. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that in this movie is, is they do it already at the, that's the very first scene of the movie. I know, yep. true. But now we have like context for what it is, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and, and you know, even though they do it twice, they go back to it twice. You know, mm -hmm. I, I love those scenes here. Like mm -hmm. it, it really gives the actors a chance to show their, show their skills mm -hmm. and like, I just love the aspect of calibrating your emotions. Like yeah. th there's a lot of ideas in this movie that yeah. I I'm just totally engulfed by a lot of ideas that aren't like laid out. Like you said, in like a Christopher Nolan movie, mm -hmm. like I don't need to know. I get why they're in like putting that, what looks like a meat a meat thermometer into their skulls. Mm -hmm. Like I get what they're doing. I don't need someone saying, "Oh, so here's what's happening." They're adjusting the dial to. Dial. Yeah, I don't need that. Right. I get. I get it. That's one thing I would say about Nolan. I wish he would stop doing this shit where he has to have in half an hour just to explain his movie before we get <laughs> right. the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And and Abbott is so good at playing the the mesh of two different personalities mm -hmm. uh the the sequence where he comes into rita's apartment and his story changes like five times like oh i tripped oh actually they attacked me oh i yeah. got so angry because i wanted to be with you and he's he's not one he's not playing himself confused he's not playing uh voss he's not one person or the other and i think you can see like the switches like it's such an interesting performance right yeah. even in that dialogue he mentions michael at some point yep. yeah yeah should have stayed with Nothing Michael. to do, yeah, like nothing to do with his life. Yeah, um, I I think he's great at playing this dual, this duality between these two characters here. Mm -hmm. Oh, agreed. I, I think it would would have been better though if the movie was his, if it was his movie and he was being invaded yeah. by this outsider because that's I mean let's be frank the whole point of this movie is it's Andrea Riseborough's character wanting to distance herself from her family to not have to have emotional baggage anymore right and it's like that's your hero question mark like oh yeah there's no hero in this movie yeah for sure that is what's front and center here and and dustin i'll go along with you here with this and, and they don't get into this in this movie and i mm -hmm. think it would have been interesting you know even though this movie is a nice hour and 45 minutes like I am completely caught up in the fact that, okay, you've got this situation with Tasa Voss's character and wanting to distance herself from any, any kind of attachments and mm -hmm. whatnot, but you've also got Colin's character who is experiencing all of this foreign shit right now and the fact that, like, you don't even think about the fact that they don't they don't play into like what if he really loved this girl that he just fucking murdered right yeah yeah and what if he really did want to be a part of this empire that her father is building yeah. like you get no aspects of that in this whatsoever you're just thrown into the situation like I'm thinking about Colin going what did I just do and how did it happen like just the confusion he must be feeling here yeah. right well 
on that note, can you just imagine how fucking confused the girlfriend is yeah, as right. she's crawling away after being shot? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. That's why I think it should be his movie from his point of view. Her confusion starts from the moment he starts freaking out and he's like, get away from me, you bitch. Like, yeah. Well, she's also confused by him waking up and being a nice person. Yeah, yeah she knows from the moment she he's uh, Voss is within him. Like, she knows he's different. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually don't have many other notes until the ending scene. So you guys, if you have other stuff you want to discuss, please. Well, I have a, I have a note for when he's at uh, Rita's apartment mm-hmm. when she's like, oh, like, I can't get you some water and gin. That's all I got. And I was like, oh, my God, it's, <laughs> it's just like being at Dustin's house. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Replace gin with whiskey. And that's that's my house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eddie has another another strange line. You're seeing all the right animals, as they say, <laughs> which is like uh, such a weird word world building line that's a tommy like, was lied. yeah <laughs> yeah you know what they say you're seeing all the right animals huh <laughs> well this scene is where i have a bulk of my notes okay because this is really where colin has started to latch on to what's going on yeah mm-hmm. he knows someone has invaded him and this whole sequence of like that was another note I had earlier is is the the interfacing scenes yeah, where it's yeah. the flashes of red and the, the rotoscoped uh, camera mm-hmm. movements and shit like that and the melting of the body and then the him coming back. All of that stuff here is great. Our second head smash of the season. Yeah. That is my favorite scene in this movie yeah. Yeah. is when he grabs her head and crushes her skull. A- and Colin turns into Carl, Carl Havoc. Havoc. From yeah, I it's think a great scene. <laughs> Which, question, so... I wonder if in the world of this movie, like, is this technology, like, known? Or do you think it's, like, a secret thing? I feel like it couldn't be. Right? Like, they, I feel like they wouldn't be able to get away with all this stuff. If- yeah. No, this is, this is 100% like a, a corporate espionage thing. Like, this is our little secret, you know? Yeah. I, I have a follow-up then. The, the job that Colin had of, like... I'm guessing, I, I don't know if the movie ever clearly explains, but the goggles he puts on where you can see and see in people's homes, yeah. is that just like invasive? Like, it's, Yeah, it's pure data mining. They're they're looking... For marketing purposes, right? Yeah. So they can create targeted ads based on what they have in their homes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Just making sure. It's like, like this motherfucker is like staring at me from my fucking Amazon Echo that's mm-hmm. sitting six feet away from me well the girl the girl in the apartment has that drop line she's like i masturbate right in front of my camera so they know what kind of vibrator i'm using that's right <laughs> that's a great i line. mean that's yeah that's just practical is all that is yeah, yeah rita's a great character <laughs> it's sad that she gets gunned down yeah her and eddie off screen deaths. yeah interesting and, and like that's that's the other thing here is like putting putting yourself in the positions of the people that have no fucking clue what's going on here sure yeah. why this is happening yeah, yeah. La- last she knew he was just a guy working for this company trying to make it somewhere and she's having an affair i don't know they don't really establish if they're having an affair or if they're swingers because she she tells him that the girl does or amy is that her the, name ava that she's okay with it ava like yeah she's she's okay with it they don't care but you know they don't really go into that again like i don't need that information you've given me enough here but still like yeah yeah well, is there any other notes we want to get to before we actually talk about the ending of the movie? Uh, no, we can jump into it. Yeah, the, my next note is is him knocking heavily on the door. <laughs> heavy, heavy knocking. Just, just laying into <laughs> that fucking door. Yeah, my, my next note is just that this is now two movies in a row where people don't have trigger discipline. Yeah. Chris abbott has got that finger on the trigger the entire time this, in, in this final scene. <laughs> And also, Mally, this is now at least twice that I can think of that you've picked a movie that featured child murder in it. Yeah. So I think the question really is, are you a serial killer (laughs) (laughs) or a child murderer? Actually, wait a minute. Who picked Freddy versus Jason? That was Nathan, right? That was me. Okay, never mind. I was going to say it's a 3P, but (laughs) since in Bruges, that's the only only one I can think of. Well, that wasn't a child. Oh, wait. No, they did kill a child. Fuck. They sure do. No, there's a child. Definitely getting... That's the inciting incident of that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Like, it's just... It's it's fun to watch. (laughs) So, yeah, man. The end of this movie is really like a fucking mastercraft and just fucking trippiness. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cosmic gumbo. It is a cosmic (laughs) gumbo. Huh. That's a phrase. Malik, could you... uh, recap for our audience who may not be familiar or don't remember what the ending of this movie is oh man all right there's some shit happening (laughs) so all right old boy rolls up 
He's he's coming. Like he knows. <laughs> he, like he, yeah, Colin. That boy coming. My fucking. Oh, Lord. That boy. Oh Lord, he coming. <laughs> um, ye old peanut butter neck. Um, <laughs> no, that's next week. Yeah. So he rolls up at Voss's house and just immediately fucking like is like threatening her ex ex husband. Yeah. Kind of, like I don't know. It's ex husband, but like they still fucking. Yeah. So what's yeah. going on there? Well, they're separate. They're separated. Yeah. I don't know what that entails. Separated. But. Well, they still fuck. Anyway, <laughs> that people do that. Molly. <laughs> I know. Um, and then there's like this weird like moment where like they're kind. They almost have like a mental conversation like how how would you describe that like an internal monologue mm -hmm. or i guess an internal dialogue yeah, yeah. well another th another thing that sends fucking shivers down my spine is when he stabs himself in the head with that piece of glass yeah to, yeah. to, to rupture oh, the impa yeah. implant don't like that yeah Ooh, don't like that well because at first it kind of seems like she's in control because the way he's holding it makes it seem like he's gonna like yeah stab himself in the stomach mm -hmm. but then he just lifts it and stabs himself in the head yeah. which is somehow worse uh -huh. yeah i i guess we we never described that to people that maybe didn't watch the movie and is just listening to the episode. Uh, None of this makes sense if you haven't watched the movie. Yes. <laughs> this is like, um, it's kind of like the Matrix, but instead of getting to a telephone, you have to kill yourself to get out of this uh, mind control. And it also, it ties up all the loose ends. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's more of that kind of comparison to Inception almost. Yes. So... And then it's kind of like she. So like, let's talk about this. So who's in control when the husband is murdered? Um, I think I think he's in control when the husband's murdered. I think she's in control when the next murder happens. When the son's murdered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Copy that. I agree. Okay, that's that's where I'm at too. I've seen there's some debate online about that apparently about who's in control when. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the movie spells it out pretty pretty well. Yeah, well, the internet's stupid. Yeah, it's pretty clear. Well, I mean, it's that it's that cut from from him as a character to her as a character yeah. right. firing the gun. So, but she's got anger in her face when she's doing it. True. So I think that's what you're supposed to garden from that. So. Mm -hmm. Um. So anyway, so he murders the husband brutally. I might add yeah. with that fucking meat cleaver. Cut some fingers off. Right. Which mirrors the stabbing from the beginning of the movie. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cutting half the hand off just immediately. Yeah. I love the little shot of like the two fingers unfurling. Yep. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. It's so good. Great. <laughs> Um, and then so like he murders the husband and he's just kind of like leaning back and then just fucking out like from the fucking side of the frame just comes a tiny hand with a knife just <laughs> stabs him in the throat. <laughs> yep. Just fucking. Ah, ah. That's exactly how it is in the movie. He even goes. Bah, bah. <laughs> I also love that both both of the neck stabbings that happen here are in camera and you see the knife go in and come back. out. Yes. Yeah, it's fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. And then so, like, he turns, shoots, and it's the child. Dun, dun, dun. It's, yeah, it's her son with Girder controlling him. Yeah. See, that's that's the twist when I saw this the first time, mm -hmm. was, okay, not only is it the kid who just fucked things up and is now getting killed, yeah. but then you get that, oh, it was Girder taking over the kid. So yeah. that's where this whole movie kind of spun on its head for me, and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. agree because yeah. at first you're like oh no she shot her kid yeah. yeah and then she just fucking wails on the fucking kid yeah. like yeah. shoots him like five more times fucking empties the clip into the child yeah insane and then that's when you get the second reveal of pull me out and you're like oh yeah. mm -hmm. fucking girder which also what kind of a fucking name is girder very strange I, I fucking love the name tasa voss that that's that name's awesome yeah that's a good name <laughs> it's it's a sci-fi name <laughs> oh yeah that's some like halo shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> i guess we didn't talk about too there's like a, an association thing that girder does with her of like yeah making sure that she's back in the real world and connecting with everything that yeah. one of the things is a pinned butterfly and she says at the beginning that she felt guilty about killing it. Yeah. And at the end here, it's a beautiful shot, but Colin and her son dead on the floor kind of mirrors that. Mm -hmm. It's like a their blood pool yeah. mm -hmm. almost forms like a bloody butterfly. So it's it's synergy. It's working well. And the fact that it leaves you on that sort of test about if she's really back. Mm -hmm. And the, the line in the beginning is, is you know, I, I killed this impendent and I felt guilty about it and I still do. Yeah. And then at the end is... I, I killed this impendent and then she doesn't feel guilt anymore. Like, yes, yep. I love that. 
love it. So good. And Gerder's pleased to see that. Yeah, because, you know, we didn't touch on this either. Like, Gerder is trying to prime her to take her spot in this, uh, you know, uh, right. whatever you want to call it, association or, or like, I don't know. But yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean that, that's the that's the part that I still think about in the ending of this is how it's all that she's got to feel nothing. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's all been this play for her to lose all attachment to things, and then how Gerder is manipulating her, and then the end with her taking over the kid, like is just the nail in the coffin. It's like okay, we've got you where we want you. Yeah, which leads me to my next question, though, because Ira, the the kid, leads uh, Colin back to the house. And when when he's when they when he finds Ira, Ira is talking about how he's found this map that'll take him to the lake. And my question is, was Gerder already planning to drown Ira? Mm. Like, was Gerder already planning the death of uh, ta- uh, of Voss's family? Probably. Very possible. Six views. And I did not pick up on that at all. Nathan, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I just this movie, uh, I'm, I'm literally just like, so what's the worst thing someone can do? Because probably that's what the plan was. <laughs> well, you know, I it's interesting enough because I've actually been playing um, the uh, the Hitman video games mm, lately. Mm-hmm. And I found we know we follow you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's kind of a similar thing of like this, this company group grooming this person to be like this ultimate Mm -hmm. emotionally vacant void of a killing machine and that's what this movie is but what's different here is this person still has at least somewhat a shred of humanity left like her rehearsing at the beginning of like what it's like to be normal in front of her family yeah it i feel like she does want to be that person but at the same time she's like no i just want to be rid of it like the duality here is interesting but as i said before i think it would have been better played if it was maybe from colin's point of view for this whole thing well Gerder is like the Joker. She just needed to give Tasa Voss that push. Ah, Gerder's the scamp. <laughs> Gerder is a bit of a scamp. <laughs> Gerder's the scamp. We did it. A very dark scamp. <laughs> but this, so this movie is just about capitalism, right? Because that's what I took away from it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a bit of that for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's the consumerism stuff with the yeah. targeted ads, but it's also like, just be, just do what we say to do because we said it. Like, that's kind of how i took well, it and it's also yeah technology dehumanizing people mm-hmm. and, yeah. and yeah exactly don't don't have attachment to your family have attachment to your job mm-hmm. yeah. yeah that's how i took it and that's the other thing about this that i that i walk away just loving is a lot of movies do that nowadays they give you this social commentary within them mm-hmm. and beat you over the head with it this doesn't do that it yeah. lets you make your own you know it lets you pull what you want from this it doesn't beat you over the head with it and i love that it's much more subtle Definitely. Well, does anyone have any other notes before we get to our, our wrap up segments here? I will say in, in a sense of an assassination movie, mm-hmm. I like that this doesn't play like the Jason Bourne action packed. Oh, yeah. Right. Sort of like style of things like it really digs into the mundane lifestyle of just like this is what we do every day and this is how I mean, like, yeah like i have to i have to be this person but this person is not interesting this person is not fun like right, yeah. you just yeah like I, I think that is another great aspect here it does take some of the glamour out of murdering <laughs> just a tiny bit <laughs> yeah all right let's get to some of the more fun upbeat aspects of the show let's talk about prop cop For new listeners, Prop Cop is a segment that we like to have on the show where uh, we look at all the different props, wardrobes, set dressing, anything tangible in the movie, and we kind of play like a fantasy draft. We pick items from the movie that we would like to own for our own personal, uh, albeit hypothetical, collection. (laughs) There's a ton of great props in this movie. I think that the, uh, the production design, the art direction, it's all pretty great. Mally, since this was your pick, I will give you uh, first picks on Prop Cop. What, what do you want to take? Rita's entire fucking apartment. Yeah, dude, those those plastic light bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> that entertainment center. Yeah, that place is fucking dope. All right. That fucking white white TV in the white entertainment center and shit. Yes. That, yeah, like that shit's boss. Uh-huh. <laughs> Shit is clean. <laughs> yeah. Clean. Josh, what about you? Uh, I want that 
fucking toss of Voss mask after he breaks her skull and puts her face on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want that damn thing. Hell yeah. The Carl Havoc mask. Yeah. I knew someone was taking it. It was either that or the emotion recalibrator <laughs> device thing. I think that thing looks pretty cool. Yeah, that thing was cool. That would be handy every day I go to work, right? <laughs> As a serial killer, you gotta <laughs> calibrate those emotions. Yeah. Dude, like, vo- like her standing outside her, like, husband's house going, practicing her mannerisms. Mm-hmm. Like, that is literally me walking in every fucking morning <laughs> i can see that nathan maybe you guys should team up you and josh could be like a, is there ever been a serial killer duo i don't know but we can make it happen yeah <laughs> there you go. i mean we live in this we live in the same city yeah <laughs> nathan what about you prop cop um i want the double-sided couch that uh <laughs> That they lay like so. So Voss is laying on one side, Girder's laying laying on the other. Mm-hmm. Um, that just seems like a real nice thing to to have. I can you know, put my cats on one side. <laughs> <laughs> All the furniture in that office is badass. Like the chairs they're sitting in when they're doing that that test. Yeah. It's got those. Yeah, I don't know. Like it looks like pillows that roll up the back of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. very comfy. Their furniture looks very very comfortable. Nathan, like I know you have a girlfriend and everything, but when you say shit like that, it just makes me think like, man, he's gonna die alone <laughs> <laughs> well bury me with my fucking double-sided couch dog <laughs> that'd be a comfy ass grave man i can't i can't believe nobody took the item that i'm gonna take the dancing doll oh no get that shit away from me it's fucking creepy as hell <laughs> Nah, keep yeah no you can fucking have that <laughs> All right, I'm taking it. Actually, motherfucker, you and that doll can go in the fucking grave. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you can keep 2008 alternate 2008 Chucky. You can have that. Somewhere. That's right. He did a little jig. I thought it was pretty great. Nope, absolutely fucking not. All right. Well, what about bit part? This is, uh, of course, where we replace an actor in the movie with ourselves, but preferably a a smaller role and non named character, mm-hmm. just so we can have a little cameo. Uh, Nathan, let's start with you. Bit part. Uh, I want to be the lead technician who tells her to make sure she pulls the trigger this time. Okay, <laughs> that's just the. I'm, I want to be the sassy bitch scientist. Nice. Okay. All right. She is dogging him the entire movie too. Yeah, she <laughs> sure is. She's like, she said, "What the fuck did you say?" <laughs> Mally? Uh I want to be the bald dude that's with Sean Bean both times Tate approaches him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just one of his buddies that's standing there. Like, he's just vibing. He sure is. <laughs> like, just kind of look, sees Tate walk up. He's like, hey, there's someone behind her. <laughs> like, yeah, be that dude. Okay. Hanging out with Sean Bean. I'm good with that. Yeah. Uh, Josh, what about you? I was trying to think of an angle to play here to, like, what would be the best one. But since I'm a portly gentleman, I guess I'll be the lawyer that dies at the beginning. <laughs> <Nice>. Oh, damn. <laughs> that was That was one of my first picks. Okay, that's a, that's you get to die on cam. That's pretty cool. And Nate, um, Mally took my other one, so I have to do my fallback, which I didn't want to have to do. Uh-oh. Oh no! But I guess I'm going to be the dude that is eating that girl out in the <laughs> blinds <Jesus> montage. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> that's the only one I could think of that would have been worth at least mentioning. So I mean, good for him. He's yeah. taking care of her. Uh, like yeah. we we talk about a lot of horror movies where the ladies are just not being serviced, and th- this movie like makes it a point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, Dustin's going to learn, have to learn how to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. Uh. (laughs) Jesus Christ. This is the most disgusting episode we've done by far. It's a gooey episode. It's a, ugh. I'm glad I was here. (laughs) Now we're going to get into the part of the show (laughs) that I'm terrified of because honestly, I don't. I don't have one. So this this is gonna be interesting. I, <laughs> so. Man, I know. Oh, I got one locked and fucking loaded, don't, y'all. Oh Jesus. Oh, I I can already guess that it's gonna be terrible. Yeah. But it's fine. <laughs> it's not my worst one. Let's talk about our job. The whole reason we're here. <sighs> we are finding the silver lining of possessor. Mally, since you volunteered, please. Oh, no, please. I would, I would, if everyone else would like to go, that's fine. Of course. Okay. Nathan? Uh, yeah, so as the credits rolled on this movie, I literally turned to my dad and I was like, I got fucking nothing. This is so bleak. And then I, (laughs) the only way I was able to do it was I had to look at it from a character's perspective. Uh, And so if I, if I'm in Girder's POV, she got the agent she always wanted, mm-hmm. but uh, that's not a happy ending. No, like, not really. Uh, there is there is not much to to celebrate when the when the credits begin to roll. Okay, 
Well, uh, Josh, are you able to save us here? <laughs> uh, probably not. Okay. Um, <laughs> I admire the honesty. <laughs> in, uh, in my viewing of this, uh, Lisa Voss doesn't have to worry about a college fund now. Oh, my Jeez. God. That's Mally's <laughs> oh answer, God. isn't it? <laughs> not quite. <laughs> That's the only thing I could pull out of this one. <laughs> well, I guess based on what the movie is telling me, mm-hmm. and I'm going to kind of kind of piggyback off, off of that, uh, Voss com- kind of completed her mission. She yeah. is detached from the emotional baggage that she has yeah like her husband's dead her son's dead for her it's a happy ending ish yeah so like i like i said guys i had nothing i got nothing (laughs) (sighs) all right mally please do us the honors i mean haven't we all just wanted to fucking shoot our emotional baggage in the fucking face fucking knew it (laughs) metaphorically (laughs) haven't like just we've all had those days sure (sighs) dustin you're a father what do you think (laughs) I think they're going to play this episode at your deposition when you get <laughs> wrangled in by the authority. <laughs> Yo, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, really, really the, br- the bright side here is that uh, girls are getting cun- cunnilingus in this movie. Yeah, that's that's the bright side. There yeah. you go. There you go. Yeah, but it's fr- like it's from Dustin, though. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> at least something's happening. So that's not what she said. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy cow. This is maybe our number one contender for Law and Order Silver Linings unit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I had the theme song like loaded up right here. But anyway, I know I was kind of upset you didn't hit me with it right there. That's all I got. <laughs> well, it's too fucking late now. <laughs> well, look. Silver linings aside, we do have at least something to help out on a more meta sense <laughs> uh, if the silver linings we offer did not do j- justice for this movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think we fucking nailed it. <laughs> and that is, of course, the pick me up alternative, a.k.a. the double feature. Uh, so this is where we recommend a movie that you watch after you watch Possessor mm-hmm. as a double feature to bring you back around if Possessor left you feeling kind of bleak. Right. As it rightfully should. Um, but if our silver linings didn't do it hopefully our alternatives will so josh you're our guest do you have a double feature in mind of what would pair well with possessor well i kind of went with the one that would just be a good double feature as opposed to the the heartfelt one first here mm-hmm. okay uh I, this would pair great with his other film antiviral All right. i suggest if you if you like this movie check out antiviral i think looper would be a good thing oh interesting to watch with this. Yeah. Oh. oh yes another film we've covered on this show <laughs> yeah <laughs> but if you if you need something to listen if your spirits, I couldn't really think of a movie that would pair well with this. But okay. right now, any anytime I'm needing my spirits lifted, just fucking watch Ted Lasso because that nice. show's amazing. Uh, there true. you go. Yeah, true. I need to I need to catch up on season two. It's great. All right. Um, uh, Mally, what about you? Pick me up? Uh, yeah, of course. The animated film Anastasia. Um, no. <laughs> That's a joke no one's gonna get. <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> but I got it and that's all that matters. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with... I mean, the obvious choice, guys, face off. Sure. I knew it. There's a face that's taken off. There's the death of a child. <laughs> it's face off. Yeah. Peaches are just getting eaten all day. Jesus. It's great. Nathan, what about no, you? No, not Jesus, Nick Cage. <laughs> um, my... There is a difference. <laughs> my One pick of them's me up... real. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Nathan, please. My pick me up is a, a, a significantly more fun movie involving possession. Uh, 2009's Jennifer's Body. Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah. Hell yeah. Severely yeah. underrated. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. That movie's definitely made a resurgence here lately. Yes, it like, has. There's a lot of people talking about it. We love to see it. It really has. Well, I actually mentioned this movie earlier, and it's, it was something I just couldn't stop thinking about, mostly because it sort of has a similar story-ish to this movie, but also because uh, the trailer for the next one just dropped recently. But I'm going to say, go back and watch the original Matrix. Yeah. It's something that also deals with, like, jacking into a different world and doing different things in different kind of different people's bodies sort of questions of identity yeah 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 good choice yeah i i I haven't rewatched the original matrix in a while i'm eager to rewatch it soon also i mean if you want to have a mind fuck of an evening this would also pair good with enemy yeah oh oh oh, no oh oh no (laughs) i don't know if this would be much of a pick-me-up though if we did enemy (laughs) (laughs) but it certainly would Get your brain rolling for sure. Yeah. Oh my God. It just occurred to me. This movie's, oh, this is a pro abortion movie. Fuck yeah. Oh God. <laughs> what? 
Uh, do I dare ask no. that you elaborate? Don't ask. Okay. Nope. All right. Let's keep it rolling. Um, last but not least, um, do we recommend this movie? I'll open the floor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, just, just you know, steal your stomach because holy shit. <laughs> I can't believe you ate Chinese food while watching this. <laughs> That's true. I'll, I'll play devil's advocate and say that I'm a little conflicted about it because I think we've, we've spoken our piece on it. This is a well-directed, well-written, mm -hmm. well-edited, well-acted, well-shot movie. I mean, we didn't even really talk about the visual imagery of just like the scene of uh, Andrea Riceborough becoming Christopher Abbott, which right. was incredible. All, all in camera and practical too. Like Oof. very little CGI done in this movie. Like it's amazing. It looks good. But I think... Brandon Cronenberg, at least in this film, gets a little too lost in that visual imagery of the movie, like a little too much of the aesthetic to really get a handle on on a, some of the pacing. I can see that it it worked for me, but yeah, I can I can see I can see that. Yeah, I I think maybe he thought just a tad bit too little of his audience mm. when making this movie. Like I like the ideas, but I think maybe he thinks the the ideas are too complex to understand, but they're definitely not. <laughs> but that being said, I, I do like this movie. I, it is something I will revisit. Um, I would just say, I, I don't even want to call it pretentious, but it, <laughs> it, it does have like this kind of air about it at certain moments. Um, yeah, th that I, I am interested to see what he does next. So I just, I would say if you, if you, if you are a film lover, if you like competent filmmaking, there you go. We do, you know, like this is, this is something to definitely, it's a feast for thine eyes, as some people would say. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, you're seeing all the right animals. <laughs> it definitely has subject matter that is not, that is not for everyone. I, uh, I had to make that clear in my uh, sort of promotion of it in my, in my video on, on YouTube. Buzz. Yeah. If you, if you are, are, you know, if you don't like seeing children harmed, you need to stay far away from this. And maybe don't watch it with your parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or your kid. Or do. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, at least the child murder comes out like the very end of the movie. <laughs> you see what could happen, you little shit? <laughs> now go clean your room. Some would say they saved the best for last. <laughs> Which why I'm going to say Face Off is a better movie because it fucking just hits you right off the fucking bat. <laughs> right imme immediately before the prologue. Yeah. You know, during the prologue. Yeah, it's like, let's fucking go. Listener, if you have... Seeing Possessor and you have some thoughts on it that may differ with ours or you agree with ours and you want to let us know, you can send your feedback into the Silver Lungs playlist at gmail.com or you can DM us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Mm -hmm. Please, if you haven't already, of course, uh, subscribe, rate, and leave feedback. We really appreciate that. Share our show with your friends and family uh, and check us out on all the social medias, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit. Um, Josh, thank you so much for coming on the show. You were just a, an insightful, yeah. a, a great voice to add to this episode. Thank you so much for having me, guys. I had a blast. I, I, you know, as, as you can tell, I like this movie. Yeah, we should probably <laughs> wrap it up. It's getting dark out. Josh got stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm cutting into my time here, guys. Well, well before, you, before you leave us to go do whatever it is that, that Creatures in the Night do, will you please plug your show for us? Yeah, we're, we are the VHS Files podcast. Uh, we are on every platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all that. That good stuff we talk about a lot of the movies from our childhood and the good the bad and the ugly of those uh try to find those obscure actors that you see in movies all the time but can't quite place their names mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so if you if you like nostalgia if you like those older films we we do that on our show so please check us out uh, i also we also have a youtube channel you can see me there doing movie reviews kind of giving you my my movie hauls that i've picked up and doing things like director spotlights on brandon cronenberg yeah and the name of that show again for for those t tuning in here is uh the vhs files is that the, right the vhs files yes sir there you go and again if you don't know what a vhs is google it audience <laughs> <laughs> well before we get out of here uh spooky linens keeps rolling and we've got a fucking banger of an episode coming for you next week so nathan yes it's your pick uh, do you have a clue for us for what we're talking about next week yeah, next week's movie proves that podcasters ruin everything. <laughs> and buckle up, listener, because we're going to ruin that movie probably, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys. This was a lot of fun. I'm glad I finally got to see Possessor and had a reason to. So, uh, yeah, that's just part one of four coming up on our Spooky Linings playlist for the month of October. So until then, rest in peace, Oatmeal. And as always... Pull, pull me, me out. out. Pull me off. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just, just pull me. I don't know. Excelsior. 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 Excelsior.
Excelsior. Oh. Look it up. Oh. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters!